Do I have any uh, corrections? Oh, come on, you must have misspelled something. <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion made and seconded. One more chance. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of the uh, accepting the minutes as uh, read, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, now a lot of stuff is going to be coming together uh, over the next several weeks. So just to remind you, uh, we have Minuteman, both the, both the capital project and the budget, uh, which uh, Stephen had forwarded to you. Uh, so, you know, please review that. Please come up with your questions. Now, I was just doing some quick numbers on the capital project, and it could be around a million five our annual debt service payments. If you, de you divide that by 150 students, we don't have 150 right now, but we have, that's $10,000 per student on top of the 22,000 or 24 or whatever we pay now per student costs. So that's going to, it's a big decision. And uh, uh, now if we, if any town, any of the 16 towns votes against the project, uh, the bond issue, which Minuteman has already voted, uh, we have 60 days to say no. If any town votes no, um, and could be by the time we get to the Arlington town meeting, one of the others will vote no. I don't know. But then Minuteman is going to a referendum. At least that's the determination by the superintendent. It's a town. It's a district-wide referendum uh, in every. Uh, town, I think it's scheduled for June 18th, and it's a majority vote. Not in each town, it's a majority vote throughout the entire district. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that has implications under the new agreement um, that, that we can talk about later. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be a big issue. Now, we represent probably 33 to 38 percent of the enrollment of the district. We only represent about 17% of the total population. So we don't have as big a say, you know, as we might think we do, um, unless we get a lot of turnout, you know, in Arlington on it. So that's uh, Thursday. There's a lot of important questions on that. Uh, so Thursday we'll do that. Next, I'm oh, sorry, Wednesday. Uh, the 23rd we'll have Minuteman. Uh, next Monday we have HED is coming back. Uh, to do another presentation on their uh, on their budget, <coughs> the Tourism Commission. Uh, there'll be a short foundation budget review recommendation and proclamation that I think was handed out uh, last week. Uh, and then we'll try to finish as many as we can. We have the uh, insurance budget. Uh, we've got some items in the uh, to do. If we can get like 90% of all that done, um, I'll cancel Wednesday's meeting the 30th. There's no meeting for the 4th, the 6th, or the 11th of April. But we, we in all likelihood, we'll have, we'll have a meeting on April 13th. Um, because we have a special town meeting. If we have time, I'll try to knock off some of those articles. But we're waiting for the enrollment task force on the school enrollment for a major issue. Uh, and uh, one or two other issues. So April 13th, we will. 90% sure have, definitely have a meeting that we'll, we'll get some business to do. Uh, that's when the House Ways and Means Committee will be reporting out that we'll be able to fine tune a little bit more of the uh, local aid numbers uh, and vote that. And hopefully after that, then it's off to the uh, printer uh, as much as possible. Uh, Alan will be presenting. Uh, we'll have handouts for the budgets uh, and the summary sheet. I beg of you, please take those budgets Go back and look at what we voted uh, and go through every item to know those budgets represent what you presented and what was voted on the town meeting. Um, and if you see a mistake, you know, uh, you know, please let Alan know um, uh, and get those things set. So we're, uh, we get as much done ahead of time so uh, the, the, the fire drill at the end becomes a little less frantic. Uh, so please look over those numbers. Uh, and don't be afraid to ask questions.
to myself, to, to uh, Alan. Um, uh, anybody else you want to ask a question to? Uh, Alan, who worked in with Sandy, uh, Deputy Town Manager, to make sure all the numbers are, are copacetic. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, uh, right now the major focus of today's is the Capital Financing Committee. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Foster. Thank you, Alan. <coughs> so, <coughs> my name is Charlie Foskett. I'm <coughs> Chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, so you all received a package. Uh, we, we sent you some of this information by, uh, by email a couple of days ago. And uh, you, sh you got a package, a printed package tonight. Uh, I'd just like to start out making one correction um, on page 25 of the presentation. Uh, Different 
department managers and, and uh, leaders in the town to uh, defer expectations. Put off, in other words, to defer their, their gratification and say, okay, I can't get it this year, but maybe I get it two years from now. Once it's in the capital plan, they know they're going to plan on it, and eventually uh, the assets that they're looking for to deliver the services to the uh, citizens uh, are available. But I think I mentioned in my email the, um, uh, the little, little uh, two-letter codes on the top of the page that refer to people, the people who are going to present the various uh, subjects. So let me just uh, summarize on how we approach the capital uh, planning practice. So we plan five years with a rolling five-year plan. We actually have requests that probably go seven or eight years out, but they're uh, buried in our spreadsheet somewhere. We, we look at the uh, town budget and we adjust, adjust it so that we get a non-exempt budget. And that will be explained to you uh, a little bit later. And then we look at this non-exempt budget and we, we control the capital spending so that it's within 5% of, the, of this non-exempt non revenue budget. And this allows us to forecast cash expenditures and borrowing <coughs> and then service, uh, service the debt on that borrowing and still stay, stay within the, the 5% limit. And we ha have about, uh, actually, I just noticed another mistake here. Uh, we now have 30 years of uh, successful capital <laughs> planning <laughs> within this budget. Um, the, the request from the town and school side, uh, you know, the t they, they, town side and school side have different objectives, but they both get funded out of this non extent capital budget. And again, they make the, um, uh, they, they, they reach their objectives and they make uh, concessions to each other in order to keep the budget within, within 5%. So um, the budget that's being presented to you tonight, both the budget and the plans, stays within this 5% recommendation, which was a policy uh, set by uh, the uh, Finance Committee a number of years back, and, and we intend to uh, keep using that in, in the future. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, Ian Margolis to bring us up to date on some of the projects that have been funded in previous uh, capital budgets and uh, are underway or completed in the town. Hi, so um, some of the recent uh, capital projects that we've completed, um, various roadways and sidewalks and water improvements and sewer improvements have been uh, funded throughout the plan. Um, completed design and construction of the Central Fire Station, which was completed in July. Um, the tennis court at Spy Pond have been completed. Uh, phase one and two of the community safety building project and the successful development of the town of Arlington master plan. Um, some of the capital projects that are, <coughs> that are in process, uh, again, we fund uh, water and sewer improvements every year, uh, ongoing uh, roadway and sidewalk improvements. The Gateway, um, Comprehensive Gateway Initiative, right now the planning department, well, they, they hired a landscape architect last year into this year, um, and they have a set of drawings for the welcome signs and landscaping. Um, they have planning specs and management plans, and planning is working with the Public Works Department on this project, and they're looking to start planning um, and adding sign work this fall um, after the procurement process. Um, the completed design and, prep and preparing to begin construction for Magnolia Park and Basketball Court. Um, this project, I think, should be bid later this month with construction hopefully starting in May. Um, we have the completed design for rink electrical upgrade, um, which will be in March, <coughs> hopefully awarded in April, um, so the construction will start uh, in July. The completed design of Stratton Elementary. Um, to begin construction this summer, and that will be discussed later on. Um, and planning phase for the townwide VOIP project. Um, currently, there's two phone switches, one for the town and one for the school. Um, they sent an RFP, and they received a lot of questions on the RFP. <coughs> so they're working um, to put out another RFP, which includes all of those questions. And that will go out next month. Um, and there, it's going to go to companies that are on the state bid list. Thank you. So Sandy uh, Fuller is going to give us an uh, explanation of how we reconcile our uh, not even budget to the town budget and also uh, how the plan is reconciled within the finance committee guidelines. Well, 
you've gone from good words and explanations, now we get into the numbers, so it's a really fun part of any capital plan. Um, so starting on page 10, uh, and what we're going to talk about for a minute is that 5% number and how we get to it and why that's important. And before I get into the numbers, I would like to reiterate something that Charlie said, and just give you a little benefit of my experience watching capital plans in other communities. This 5% number that Arlington has is a very, very important number. And it is a testament to the town's ability to do long-term <coughs> planning and its commitment to funding capital that you, that you and I will now say we have stuck with that number. Uh, so it's a big deal, it's a good idea, and it's something that it's in everybody's interest to keep doing. So for that, how do we get to it? And uh, what does it mean? Uh, if you look at the part, top of page 10, uh, with the reconciliation for the town five-year plan, what we first start with is the overall town budget. And that town budget is everything that the, that the town raises and spends every year. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the long-range plan that uh, comes up from time to time. So you start with the number from here. What's the bottom line? But the 5% is really only meant to focus on kind of core spending in the town. So you start by subtracting three things right off the bat. One is the amount that's added to the tax levy for the amount of uh, money that we absorb in taxes for our MWR system, about five point. Uh, $6 million. And again, because that's not really related to overall spending or capital, that gets taken out. The second thing is uh, uh, exempt debt service. In other words, uh, the debt service that uh, we pay for things that have gone through a debt exclusion override. So since that's already going to capital, we take that out. And then third is the amount that's in the budget um, that the enterprise funds pay to the general fund for the time that those general fund workers like me and the treasurer's office and parts of those, there are little slices of all of those that get paid for by the enterprise funds for the work that they do to support the enterprise fund. So then you get down to that $136 million, which is what I call the core town budget. <coughs> you then start to think about uh, what we're spending and how it adds up to that 5%. So 2017, we start with uh, this $6,865,000 in um, prior non-exempt debt. In other words, this is debt that has been issued in the past and we have to pay it off. It's like your annual mortgage payments for several mortgages that you took out for all the things that the town's bought over time. Uh, and then there's cash, uh, uh, just plain outweighs for buying things. And then um, you have to factor in that we're going to borrow some more in the future, and you have to know how much to set aside for that uh, in the 17 budget. So that gets you $9.6 million in total spending. But there are several sources that you take off from that. And I'm not going to go through all of the details of this, although I'd be happy to, or there are those of us up here who can go through what each of these lines mean. But Essentially what it means is that there are other sources of funding that pay for some of that $9.6 million of capital, uh, whether there are other funds uh, that uh, are specifically set aside for certain capital things, or uh, at the bottom here when we talk about bond premiums, sometimes when you sell a bond, in other words, you, when you borrow money, you get sort of an upfront cash payment. It's like reverse points on a mortgage. <coughs> And uh, we spread that out uh, over time uh, and in order to, to fund things. So then you get down to a total of $6.8 million. That's really what we're going to spend in FY17, essentially out of the tax levy on capital. And you compare that to the $136 million. Right below that is $6,819,000. Million, uh, $6, $6, that would be exactly 5%. So we're at 4.99 percent, in other words, $14,000 short of the 5 percent this year. That same exercise goes out into the future. Some years we're a little bit above, and some years a little bit below. Anybody have any questions about? Okay, so uh, we're now going to go into uh, some of the, the topics in the different sections of the capital budget. 
including uh, expenditures on community safety, uh, how we're handling the uh, Community Preservation Act, uh, the bond premium strategy, which is a you know, relatively big offset number that, uh, that uh, Sandy just referred to, uh, the Stratton School funding and what the impact of that is on the capital budget and, and various other uh, spending uh, issues. So I think the first uh, subject we'll address is the community safety, Brian. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the community safety building renovation, as, as you know, has been going on for a very long time. It was originally a five-phase project. We condensed the last three phases into one in order to give the staff a break uh, and save some organization costs. Uh, the uh, uh, bids for the states came in favorably. Uh, we were able to uh, expand the scope slightly to uh, include an emergency generator facility, which wasn't originally planned, and also to uh, have $500,000 remaining in the original budget that was allocated to help fund the strategy. Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, the first and left side second floor spaces were hoped to be ready right about now. They had hoped to give you your room back next week, uh, but it's going to be a few weeks more. You'll probably get it back right around the time town meeting starts and you don't care anymore. Uh, uh, should be ready in April. The remaining, that, that's a correction actually, it said late March, it's going to be needed. The remaining administrative space, spaces will be done late this summer. Uh, we'll have an updated budget number in about another three weeks once the uh, demolition is completed on, um, uh, on the remaining space and uh, there may be some positive news now about the, uh, the remaining budget. Um, as it stands, the total of eight-year investment is going to be about $12.5 million in that budget. Uh, moving on to the general uh, police budget. Uh, some, yes, sorry. How much was the original cost to build the thing? Do you have yes. any idea? I think it was less than that. I'm sorry? I think it was less than that. Yeah. I think John said it was less than that. Uh, oh, well, kind of in the 70s, right? Yeah, it was built in the 70s. 79, 80, something like that. Right. Uh, so the, uh, the general police capital budget includes the usual cyclical replacements of the cruiser fleet, uh, and the replacement of minor units and body armor. These are on a fairly fixed schedule. Uh, we are planning to replace all of the service weapons uh, in 2019. Someone asked me earlier why we would do them all at once. Um, it's because that way we <coughs> has to get a new gun. And anybody else has to have an old gun. They prefer to have them all replaced at the same time. Uh, the department is experimenting with tablet computers. Uh, they've done two studies now uh, and have not yet quite settled on, a, um, on the solutions that continues in a study phase. Uh, all of the portable radios, a fairly major investment, uh, are scheduled for replacement in 2020. Uh, what technology is used depends on some uh, decisions that will be made at the federal level. And, uh, the new canine officer um, has been born and is undergoing <laughs> basic training and will be uh, uh, sent to the Boston Police Department for advanced training after uh, finishing basic. <clears throat> On the fire department, uh, the central station was completed last year, as was mentioned. I hope you've all gotten to see it. It's uh, really a beautiful facility. Uh, that was a total four-year project of uh, $8 million. Uh, we have budgeted in this year's capital plan $1.2 million to replace the 30-year-old, excuse me, over 20-year-old uh, ladder with a, a tower, platform tower unit that, uh, uh, that the chief feels will be. It's a little more money in a standard ladder, uh, much more effective in fighting the kinds of fires that they encounter in Arlington. Uh, a pumper is scheduled for replacement next year. The radio system in its entirety, uh, at the same time as the police radio system, those two together are a multi-hundred dollar, hundred thousand dollar uh, investment. Uh, and the ambulance replacement cycle has been shortened to six years because of the, uh, the heavier use that the ambulances are getting. The chief is also working toward trying to implement uh, advanced life here, uh, advanced life support. Uh, 
uh, capabilities within the department, depending on how staffing goes and, and so we might do. <coughs> Any questions on police or fire? Yeah? Do you, do you um, plot each year a certain amount towards the guns when they're going to replace, or do you, are you asking for a big chunk of money all at once? Okay, it's a big chunk of money all at once, but I believe it's $45,000 for all the departmental weapons. Does that sound right? Shall I go on with community preservation? Okay, the, the interface between capital planning and uh, community preservation is new this year, of course. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee was created by last year's town meeting. It got a very, very late start. Typically, a Community Preservation Committee would work on the same kind of cycle that capital planning does, getting proposals in August, September, holding hearings uh, uh, on them and formulating some recommendations by, by January, February. Uh, this committee wasn't formed until October and uh, wasn't able to meet until November. So they've got a very condensed process. Uh, they have, however, received some excellent proposals. They will be um, finalizing them in the next couple of weeks. I believe they have a date to present to FinCom their, uh, their recommendations. Yeah, how do you know what date that is? I don't. I don't. Uh, with respect to the capital plan, like last year, we have segregated uh, the items that have been in the capital plan that are eligible for CPA funding into a category called CPA. They are not funded by the capital plan present. <coughs> they're, they're there and they're in our report because they've been vetted by town staff and by our committee. And they're worthy of consideration in the capital plan. But we're letting the community preservation committee have the first crack of funding them, and we hope that they will. This year, uh, the item in that situation is one of the playgrounds. It's Robins Farm. The fields and basketball courts We understand that it's made the first cut with the Community Preservation Committee. They have not taken a final vote on it, so we don't have a definite answer on that, but we'll know within a couple of weeks. And because we're not funding that, that is one of the things that it's called this time. The, uh, uh, the Stratton funding was assembled for discussion time. Okay, John? Yes, yeah, I'm trying, um, just so I understand what you're saying before. Um, uh, what you're showing for, um, for example, the Robbins Farm, was that in last year's five year plan or previous five year plan? It was in last year's five year plan in the same condition that it is now, which is shown but not funded. So, we, so beginning last year, we segregated these items okay. for consideration by the Community Preservation Committee. So um, prior to that, you're basically making room for something else by segregating it out. That's right. <coughs> funding the Right. And what we've said is that they're, they're for some reason, not really able or unwilling to, to fund those items, then we will reconsider them because they have been vetted by staff and they, and they are part of the plan. But our hope is that uh, community preservation funds will be used for Thank you. Peter? Brian? <coughs> the, the 2021 projects that are listed here, were they in the plan last year? No, because 2021 wouldn't have been part of last year's plan. And there's quite a pile of them out there. I suspect there might be some adjustment. I mean, even if we were funding them, I suspect that some of those might be shifted from year to year to smooth things out a bit. Because uh, as it happens, there are three part projects out there. That's a new thing. Is, is, is the capital plan going to continue to uh, accept? Uh, but if, uh, projects like this in future years? I can't answer that question on my own, but my suspicion is that, that you know, what, we're, what we're establishing here is a method for, uh, for town staff to submit these projects, continue to submit these projects for our consideration in parallel with uh, community preservation considering. So uh, you know, we, we didn't make any change in that process this year. I can't say whether we would next year. I, would, I guess we would not. We wouldn't change. Sarah? So, 
So um, this year, I, the IT department had to spend, was it 43,000 um, to set up what they needed to set up for the C, CPA. Um, that money will need to come out of CPA and go into that department. The other issue is um, post expense. Just for inverse the town. Yeah, to reimburse the town for that um, amount. And so that's just another amount, a significant upfront amount that needs to be considered at least this year. <coughs> so that, that's an operating expense, not a capital expense. Right. And the, the uh, the Community Preservation Act provides for, um, I don't remember the percentage, but some percentage of the fund can be used to cover operating expenses associated with the community preservation effort. Right. And, and just to right. know that... <coughs> up, that up to 5%. Okay. So that this year, that particular amount won't be available for larger projects such as this. Well, I mean, I, I assume they don't have many such expenses, architects and other things. So the, They'll have to consider it, and the town will have to approach them. That, but that's an operating expense. It's not a yeah, Yes, Alan? Is there a uh, basic agreement between capital planning and CPA that all uh, investment in town-owned uh, properties will go through capital planning, or is there a, a There's no agreement. There's no agreement. We've just been communicating. Uh, the first time we'll have an opportunity to be at a CPA meeting is on the show. John? Yes. Yeah, just one more question. Um, that health and human services, is that a CPA category, one of the, the bins that, that they have to spend a certain amount of? Yeah. Yeah. I think John's referring to the $100,000 item for the uh, I think you're referring to the $100,000 item for the uh, statue and fountain in the town hall gardens. Oh, I see. I, I didn't realize that that was a, a subcategory. Yes, so that's that's a project originally submitted by uh, Health and Human Services. It would be, to CPA, it would be this, a historic preservation project. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? So uh, he referred back to that page, that uh, page uh, 14, no, sorry, 11, that uh, Sandy Fuller took us through before. There's a mysterious line there called, um, called Adjustment for 2015 and Prior Bond Drinking, which contains some substantial offsets. And uh, Richard Biscay, town comptroller, will explain that to us. Basically, bond premiums are um, one-time cash uh, infusions that the town receives to sell bonds for capital uh, projects that they're borrowing. So uh, the town has set up a policy uh, that has two parts, any uh, general fund borrowing that is not exempt um, goes to the general fund of the town, and any borrowings that have to do with that excluded um, that service would be put into a special revenue account for the department of revenue. Um, these funds are intended to uh, relieve the cost of the capital plan, and there's not a, an appropriation from free cash or anything for these. These are uh, non-cash offsets that we amortize out throughout the plan to take those one-time revenues and apply them in a manner that would properly reflect the, the bonding costs of, of such projects. And those are the non-cash offsets you see on the bottom of the plan. You have to try to answer any questions on, on that if it's not clear to anybody. Thank you. Okay. Excellent explanation. <laughs> so uh, uh, Eve is going to give us uh, an update on the spending for the uh, Ed Burns Arena and uh, on some town-owned buildings, a uh, rental rental project. Mm -hmm. So the next slide you have with Ed Burns Arena uh, lists the rink debt um, and then the new rink debt for 2018 going forward um, for the project that you had in the plan for fiscal year 18. Um, and that includes uh, infrastructure improvements to the rink, such as locker room upgrades and also electrical improvements. 
um, and the capital plan shares um, 50% of that. Um, fund, revolving fund? It just goes into general fund. It just goes into general fund. Yeah. Okay. And, and Eve keeps track of it. That's what this, the report that was attached to this has more detailed analysis oh, of each okay. tenant. Yeah, so in the back there's a whole report and it has information. So it goes to the general fund and then just spends it. Yeah, we, we, used to, um, we used to have this segregated into special funds, yeah. but I'd say 10 or 15 years ago, um, the state ruled that it wasn't, you couldn't, that you couldn't do that, that the money had to go into the general fund. <coughs> so we stopped segregating. So in effect, it's in free cash? Yes. Okay, so at some point when you wanted to use that, uh, you'd have to use an element of free cash. Well, I mean, the capital budget is an appropriation at town meeting that the fleet's revenue from free cash, so it's, I think it all matches up. Okay. Uh, Carol. Is, is the Ryder Street pro um, property? Um, that's the building that's um, now currently rented by La La Cata. Um, and I keep saying it's been rented for a long time. The one has all the nice cord wood set up yes. along the path. So, Barbara, Barbara Thornton is on the, uh, she's on the subcommittee that manages the planning committee development and has also been instrumental in the formation of the facilities committee and the facilities department over the last four or five years. I think you've heard about that before. Uh, she's going to discuss uh, planning community development as well as uh, some uh, requests from various departments this year have led to um, let us to ask some questions about the uh, uh, quote unquote civic block, which she'll discuss, Barbara. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. First of all, I'm going to take you through your page on the uh, planning and community development. A 
we've got two issues that I want to bring to your attention. First is the long-range master plan, and as you know, it passed in the uh, town meeting last year, and it's come, going to be coming up with some very detailed issues, I think, coming up around zoning <coughs> this year. Our principal interest in the long-range master plan, speaking for the capital planning committee, is that it remember that we want a long-term fiscal stability for the town. So as we look at the master plan, we look at the tools that will allow us to gain that long-term fiscal stability. Uh, regulatory tools, land use, including zoning, modernization, uh, et cetera, are some of the things, some of the tools available through the master plan that uh, enables that stability. The second point uh, that I want to bring to your attention that relates to planning and community development is that we have two new entities in the town, the uh, Department of Facilities Maintenance and the new Community Preservation Act. Both of those provide substantial new kinds of resources to communities, to the planning and community development department and to other departments as well. We're in the stage, as, as, uh, as was alluded uh, to earlier with the, the uh, Brian talked about how the Community Preservation Act kind of came up very quickly, didn't have a lot of time. <coughs> the town is, is, the department heads are, are discovering the resources available to them, <coughs> and planning is one of the leading departments doing that. Of course, we have a new planning director. So there's a lot of new stuff, new flows of information, and new opportunities that are available in the town right now because of these two. So that says it for planning and community development. <coughs> Next on the list is the civic block and campus planning. I personally love this term. It came out of the master plan, but I think it was uh, preceded and it's been floating around Arlington for some time. It's the block of which we are a part right now. It goes down to uh, Pleasant Street. It's uh, up at this uh, Maple, down to Mass Ave, and Academy Street. And we need to be looking at the properties in there in order to create, to, to kind of stitch them together visually, to, to uh, understand how they work together functionally, and to make sure that we maintain them carefully. Uh, there's specifically, uh, we are looking at the importance of doing a uh, structural assessments of these town-owned properties and a space needs analysis for the town departments to see if there are properties that we own in this site that now, pe now we have staff lying elsewhere that, that may be uh, able to use these sites more practically. Uh, I think Health and Human Services, which was mentioned earlier, is a good example of how we might uh, use this. They are looking specifically now at the Central School, and specifically at the Central School, the first two floors, uh, and how they might be arranged better for the Senior Center. What they found when they began looking at that is that there's a, there's a, a primary concern about the infrastructure in the building that needs to be fixed and needs to be addressed. And we're going to be getting engineering reports and finding out more about that. We are asking that there be more information on how space can best be used for the town, both for revenue and for, for housing department, departments in that existing uh, facility. But it's a good example, I think, of the uh, process of civic block Planning. There are resources available, the community development, uh, block grant money, CPA money, mass historic money, and there are other state, federal, and private financial resources. Uh, my favorite thing. We have a new facilities <coughs> maintenance department. For those of you who are new to uh, the Finance Committee and have not been hearing about this for the last few years. It's been a, a long time coming and Ruth Bennett is the new head of the Facilities Maintenance Department. 
I asked Ruth before I came tonight to give me a little update on, on what she'd been doing. Uh, and, um, and it got very long. Uh, and I noticed that some of my colleagues here have pictures on theirs, and it was suggested that maybe I should just get rid of all of the text and just put Ruthie's picture up there. But we, we didn't go there. Uh, for me, one of the most important things about the facilities maintenance department is the purchase of software. And they have purchased <coughs> software. They are trying to get as much data as possible, baseline data, into that software because that software will give the predictive, uh, will give the town of Arlington a tool for predictive analysis and to do the kind of long range planning that as, that as Sandy alluded to, is Arlington's special magic. We have a, we have a capacity <coughs> in this town to do long range planning that most towns don't. And this will give us the information that we need to do predictive planning for expenditures for all our facilities, from, from boilers, roofs, buildings, everything that we own. So I'm very excited about it. And I'm very excited about what Ruth is, has done in the last uh, few months that she's been there. And they completed in nine months uh, something that, uh, <coughs> that typically uh, was 12 months to do. This has led to a bit of a problem because their, their run rate of work has been so fast that getting supplies and materials in order to do the work that they've been able to do because of the efficiency of the software and the focus of, of having the plan and the iPads that are out there in the hands of the, consult the uh, custodians uh, has, has led them to have a, um, a run out of money. So she's hoping that she'll be able to get some of the money from snow removal. Just a quick question. Does that software, can that tie in with the need for the controller to, to update the audits with infrastructure? Yes. Oh, go ahead. I don't, I don't know much about the software that they're using and how it tie in, to be honest. Yeah. It's something I'll have to do a little research on. I think what they're using right now is something called School Dude, which is a web-based project that um, it's become very popular with a lot of cities and towns. Yep. It's a, like a work order system, which is different from some of the other software needs that the, the town is looking at. I think down the down the road we can talk about getting an uh, an API or some sort of a, a transfer to pull the kind of data out of school dude. We talked to school dude before we bought it yeah. about just that, so we can get that information out of school dude and, and into whatever software um, Rich is using. It just gets calculated into depreciation and uh, of, of major town infrastructures that goes into the audits. So. Hope of fixed asset management. Fixed asset, right? Yeah. 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 Or, no, I was saying, yeah, that, that's something we have to research as, as well as, as far as fixed asset management, whether we're going to use the Munis module or use a standalone software. Right now we use a standalone module to, to account for fixed assets, but that's, uh, that's all going to be in the process of talking as we go through this process of uh, integrating financial software. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's about the, she, a couple of successes is that uh, she has finished the, uh, she's getting a lot of satisfied customers in the town, and she's finished some of the summer project lists for the schools uh, four and a half months early. They usually didn't get their summer project list <coughs> until the middle of July, and uh, she gave it to them uh, the first of March. Uh, I think that's the, the communication between the departments and the facilities maintenance, the communication between the custodians and facilities maintenance, the ability to, to, to do work orders digitally, et cetera, is a tremendous asset for the town. Any questions? Well, Rob, would, would something like the voting machines be included in, in this process? Well, they're, they're, they are, yes, technically they would be. Uh, are they running, are they breaking? Well, well what, I, what I was shocked at the last time was it uh, I, uh, I heard that uh, the voting machines are breaking down to some extent and uh, theirs are not available. Now this is a, I mean, they're, they're older, yeah. but they're relatively young from my point of view. We both have been using them for, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. And I would have last, I would have guessed they'd last 25 years, but apparently the, the 
the spheres uh, uh, are, uh, are, are not available. And that's an issue that I know is, is common in the defense industry, that you can't get spares for, all, for things that are uh, uh, for older products. And I'm wondering if any of this process would include the possibility of uh, accounting for, uh, for lack of spares that might occur and that you might buy additional machines or whatever they might be to be used then as spare parts when the spares are not available any book. That's a, uh, that's a good example. Um, I know that the software and is, uh, is going around trying to record all of the equipment, all of the parts, all of the part numbers, uh, and dates of acquisition and the, and the expected life of, of those facilities. And so I think voting machines should be in there. My problem, thank you for giving me an opportunity to complain, is that is that it's going to take her two years, she estimates, to do all that in, without any extra money. So my my secret wish is that you know I can go write a grant and get her some money to but do it's that. It's a huge thing. job just doing it. It is. I mean, if you can imagine listing all the parts of everything that, that yeah. the town owns, but it will be there, and it will be good. And I will mention the voting machines to her. Carol. Is the Central School considered a historic building? I don't think so. It hasn't come up as an historic building. Uh, I don't. I. I think it's uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. It may technically be, but it's not being talked about uh, about preserving it. But it is. But it is uh, as an historic building, but certainly preserving its character and its materials. I'm sorry, which building is this? Central school. school. Oh. So, so there's not a like, thought of just knocking it down. No. Space. No. No thought of that. Mm -hmm. It's not a historic district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there's a lot of appreciation for that. If you haven't toured the fourth floor of the Central School, you'll appreciate the opportunities for interesting spaces. I've, I've worked in the senior center on the first floor, and it's the, that stairwell just ruins the amount of the ability to use that space <coughs> effectively. Yeah, that, that's very good. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. So, <coughs> uh, Tony Lionetta and Michael Morse, uh, Michael's deputy uh, treasurer, um, manage the uh, parks and recreation and public works and similar uh, capital budgets. So uh, Michael's going to bring us up to date on what we plan to do with these departments. Thank you, Fire. So there are two slides for Parks and Rec. The first slide talks about past year uh, projects, which Pete touched upon uh, a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit more detail on each of them. For the Spy Pond Tennis Courts, they added a fifth full-size court, which now enables Arlington High School to use that as their home facility. Um, they also added a mini court, um, which is the first in the town, so they can now have a sizable court for them to learn how to play tennis on. Um, in the past fiscal year, both Hibbert and North Union were completed. Um, at North Union, there was a new electronic timing system, and this allowed um, the park to be open during school hours and during the weekends, um, which before was only open during the summer, but now can be open any time that the weather is allowable for it. And also, as Eve noted, the Magnolia Field project is going to have to bid in the next two weeks, and they hope construction will begin at the beginning of May. Uh, so this year's request, uh, Robin Farm. This is the project that Brian talked about, which we have passed along to CPA um, for them to review it. That's the last phase uh, for the Robin Farm project. The feasibility study, the, all the field users had a Field Summit meeting, and they decided that they wanted to see the functionality of having a super field. Um, so each field would be designed for a specific sport. So all soccer would be played at one field, baseball, softball played at another field. So they're having a uh, consultant come in and come and take a look at the feasibility of that. Um, this year's ADA implementation, $50,000 is going to Thorn Lake Field. That's an annual appropriation, uh, $50,000. Um, 
also try and touch upon in future years, the reservoir at Wellington, Herdfield, and Poets, those are all going to go to CPA for review. Uh, and we'll see if they can come on. I spoke with Adam Chaplin today about the spy pond bleachers. Um, he's hoping within one or two years, this will also be brought to CPA about whether to fix them up or just take them down and, and leave some historical um, resemblance of, of the bleachers. But up until that point, the PW is still maintaining them to make sure that they're safe and won't cause any type of further damage. Uh, for DPW, um, this year's request, the chapel renovation is going to replace the HVAC machine. Um, the Mystic Street, Mystic Street Bridge replacement, uh, $250,000 in this fiscal year. That's for the design. Uh, they have to decide if they're going to repair it or replace it completely. If they repair it, they hope the 250 will cover the design and the construction for it. Um, if they have to replace it in FY18, um, they have a $650,000 request to replace the bridge if need be. The traffic signal upgrades is a new request by DPW. This will be an annual request to upgrade the traffic signals throughout the town. Um, they brought in a consultant um, this past fiscal year to, to evaluate the ADA compliance of all the sidewalks and curbs. Um, needless to say, it did not go well. They had a number, potentially limitless um, projects to, to complete to make the, the sidewalks and curbs ADA compliant. So they've asked for an increase of 50000 to 500000 um, last year, we, there was a snow fighter in the plan. Um, they'd like to replace that with a dump truck so that it can be used all year round, as opposed to just during the winter months. Um, as Barbara talked about, Ruthie Bennett is now in charge of the town hall renovations, so going forward, there's most likely going to be a facilities request, um, not DPW for this type of project. Um, but she's hoping to make the town hall more energy efficient, as well as fix the front of the building, the uh, front plaza. In 1995, DPW was handed down a crane from the highway department. Uh, next year, $250,000 will go towards replacing that. Um, the one they have now is just too small. They actually have to rent out cranes from other companies to do projects where theirs is not big enough. <coughs> um, the big project coming down the line is the town yard renovations. Um, they have $1 million for design in this uh, upcoming fiscal year. Um, they expect that to be completed in the fall. <coughs> and that will give them a more accurate estimate for the construction of the project. Um, 10 million is a conservative ex uh, estimate uh, for FY20. Um, it's most likely going to be closer to 12 million, is what the director of BPW thought. Um, but 10 million is kind of just a placeholder for now. Okay, John. So it's, it's, there's a bridge on, on the 6th Street that's in shambles. I guess it's kind of collapsing from underneath. And so they have to go in and take a look to see if it's something that they can just fix the, the failing uh, structure or if it's something that they're going to take out completely and, and build a new one. So the 250000 for school year 17 minutes. That's a design only. Um, <laughs> just for the design of it, if they can go and replace it, if they can repair it, then they're hopeful that 250 will cover um, the design and the, the repairing of it. Where, where is the, is that, is that over the brook? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that was the exact question. I'm trying to figure out where there's a bridge on Mystic Street. At, at the uh, end of the community, police station. Right, right. At Cook's Hollow. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so, um, so my, my real question was, uh, so, what are the goals of the town yard renovation? Um, the goals? So we, we took a, a tour of the facility um, last year, and th there's a number of improvements that, that need to be made. Um, the roof is failing in different <coughs> areas. Um, trying to think back. We, there's going to be, after the design, um, this fall will have a full comprehensive report. But I think the goal is just to, to say that it up there are certain spills and areas that are contaminated that they need to clean up as well. So I think the goal is to have another city art facility, sort of like the central fire station. Carol? Are we, is this is the 
property that's adjacent to the high school property? Yes. Can we please make sure that we don't renovate that until after the high school is done so that so I suspect we'll have trucks going through there to the high school? Okay, that just doesn't make any sense to me. No, my uh, route of is definitely aware of that and any construction will be in conjunction with the high school. Okay, in conjunction with that. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to make a couple of comments about the Minuteman High School. I think you know I was involved in some of the uh, regional agreement discussions over the last couple of years. And the, um, the MSBA has given the green light on a $144 million project. Uh, Alan was referred to this earlier, which is now uh, sized for 628 students, including uh, in-district students and out-of-district students. The, uh, the, the modified regional agreement was essentially stalled last year, but uh, Dan Dunn mounted a, uh, a yeoman's work charging the, the, all of the selectmen and all of the town leaders throughout the district to get um, the regional agreement into, a, into shape so that it could be, uh, could be adopted. And in the process, uh, the, the, the towns that were adopting it agreed to Allow, uh, is it five times? Five times, right. No, six times. Six times leave the, leave the, leave the agreement, and that, that'll take place. Um, this uh, $144 million uh, project is going to qualify for 40% reimbursement by the MSBA, but the MSBA doesn't reimburse everything, so the net reimbursement is close to the 30%. And um, we have about 35% of the in district. Enrollment. So, um, on the on the the page facing uh, this particular page is a, a, a snapshot of the costs that, uh, that uh, Edward Quill and the superintendent of Miniman distributed uh, to town manager and other people. And the uh, basically we're going to have a 1.2 billion dollar a year capital cost. Uh, as a result, if this project moves forward, and it could be as high as Al, Al pointed out uh, earlier, and it could be as high as 1.7 million dollars. The difference is how much the out of, how many out of district students we have, and how much they get charged for capital. The 1.2 million is based on the assumptions that are in that sheet um, uh, on the opposite page, which says that the, there's about 500 thousand dollars a year being contributed by the out of district students, but. You know, we don't know how many out of district students will actually attend, and we don't know if they will attend once they know they have to pay a capital charge. If they attend now, they don't have to pay a capital charge. Um, so the important point is, without a debt exclusion, this um, amount of uh, capital cost is going to would hit our non-exempt budget. Uh, the Minimum School Committee did authorize going forward on a, a bond program on March 15th, which started a window and started a clock that where the, uh, if, if nobody objects, then it will go forward and be uh, an obligation of the member towns. If somebody vetoes it, it has to go to a referendum, and the Minuteman School Committee has set uh, I think June 18th as the date of the referendum. And if, if a simple majority of the voting people, uh, of the voting, uh, citizens in the entire district uh, favor the, uh, the expenditure, it will go forward, and that will become uh, an obligation of the parliament. So um, that's the status. I think there's going to be some a lot, a lot more interest expressed on this and a lot of discussion over the next couple of months, and there'll probably be some a detailed discussion at the town meeting. So um, uh, Richard Biscay uh, serves on the education subcommittee on the uh, capital planning committee. And Richard's going to talk about the high school, about uh, some of the other uh, costs and investments that we're making uh, in the education area. Richard. Thank you again. Um, again, Barbara and I sit on, I believe it's called the uh, administrative portion of the capital planning committee. Um, and sir, can you speak up? I said, that, 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 that doesn't amplify, that's only for TV. Okay, I'll speak up. 
Bob and I sit on the uh, administration floor of the capital plan. Uh, Bob is, is the high school, uh, the education portion of it. So uh, one of the major um, projects that are coming down the road is the uh, Arlington High School, and uh, MSBA has recommended that Arlington move forward with uh, the eligibility module of um, of this, and that is uh, going to start with a vote by the MSBA on May 25th. That starts a clock ticking on 270 days worth of tasks, which are both going to get. I won't read them all to you, but um, basically, most importantly, by the end of it, um, they will be looking for some author authorization of funding a feasibility study, which I believe a million and a half dollars is um, a number I've been throwing around for the feasibility study for the New Island High School. Um, at the end uh, of this 270 days and the um, vote in place to fund that study, uh, MSBA will then uh, vote whether an invitation to get into the feasibility module will be offered. And uh, there's a website on here if you want um, more detail on that, but we thought that was worth mentioning because it's certainly a significant expense um, for the capital plan. Question? Sure. Uh, how much will the MSBA pick up for the funding for high school? I believe that percentage changes every year, so I won't be able to give an accurate answer on that. I would probably refer you to the website or to the, um, those at the school committee that may have more information on that. Sorry, but I, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a percentage that you want to carry with you today. Okay, Paul, so if, this, uh, if the MSBA votes affirmatively on May 25th, are we going to need a town meeting to vote authorization within the 270 days? Well, you'll need to have funding in place to do a feasibility study. And that study, again, I'm hearing a number of about a million and a half dollars. Now, I would think that that would be a bond authorization vote and may very well include a, a debt exclusion vote to that. I, I may defer to Charlie if you want to speak any more on that or not. but. My understanding is that you would need you would need to show the MSBA that the funding is in place to conduct the feasibility study in order for them to vote you to go ahead with that study. So. Okay, Brian. Uh, this is your ballpark number on how much the school's going to cost at this point. Not a number I'm willing to share because I have no idea. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll step over the trial yet. The, uh, if you look at comparable costs in, in other towns, and including inflation and, and cost uh, time, we actually get to do this. Uh, I think you're, you know, probably approaching two hundred million dollars. Charlie, can you stay there? I think I'm going to go back to the question: the definition of local authorization of funding. Of who is the local authorization? Town meeting. It is. That's what I meant. So we do have to have a town meeting. Special yeah. election within 270 days. No, town. You have a town meeting. Is not a special election. There's okay. two different. There's town two meeting. different things. Sorry, we have to have a special. There's an authorization meeting. of debt, and the town meeting yeah. authorizes the debt. Now, once it authorizes the debt, that means that it's either going to come out of the, the non-exempt budget, which you're looking at here tonight, and you notice that the five percent is very close, so there's not any room in there, right. or if the debt can be excluded, and that requires the debt exclusion referendum, special election. So, and we have to do that within 20, 270 days after May 25th? Yes, you have, we have 270 days to come up with the funding for the feasibility study. So is that motion in progress? Um, I think the school enrollment task force, the board of selectmen, the board of selectmen is the only body that can put something before that can, can call a debt exclusion vote. So the, the bond authorization is a town meeting issue, and the a debt exclusion is a board of selection issue. Okay. Charlie, Charlie, your, excuse me. John? Uh, your $200 million uh, estimate, does that assume that the that the school is knocked down and we build a new school? No, it's just uh, looking at uh, Winchester and several other towns around that have recently undertaken high school re renovations or replacements. 
in, um, I mean, it, in other words, we couldn't say, well, it's just going to be $50 million. I mean, look at, look at them, it's $150 million. Okay. So um, if, if you figure this is going to be three or four years out, and this is a very complex building. If, a building, if, if most of the building stays there, it's going to be very expensive to renovate. Uh, otherwise, you have to demo big portions of it, and you have to figure out how to educate the students while all this is going on. So it's not going to be a, a simple project. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not done. Um, next slide is uh, speaking uh, to the uh, technology needs of the schools. Um, there's a slide that talks of uh, MCAS testing will require all digital format and starting in the year 2019. And uh, students need access to technology to prepare for the online assessments, MCAS, access testing, um, ELL, et cetera. 45% of the uh, assistive technology in the special education students is five years old uh, uh, to replace, to be replaced in fiscal year 17. And one-on-one -on -one computer replacement in the Thompson began this year with a third of the devices being replaced. And uh, the schedule is to do a third in 17 <coughs> and another third in 18. Those costs are uh, built into the IT budget because the schools and the town have a consolidated IT department, and you'll see the funding for those computers built in that schedule there. The last slide um, on schools that we thought was worthy of uh, speaking of was the uh, Strat School Initiative, which is the final school in the elementary school rebuilding program that uh, began in 2000. Uh, scheduled <coughs> construction. Um, would start in June 2016 when the school closes. Um, students will be relocated to module classrooms on site for one year, and the renovated tracks will be ready for school starting in calendar year 2017. Permanent town building committee will be overseeing this project, and there is a slide here detailing the financial financing of the track in phase two, which I will turn over to. Brian to explain a little further. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> so as you know, the special town meeting of uh, uh, a month and a half ago voted the funding for the Stratton project. It's a combination, as these projects typically are, of a variety of funding sources. Uh, including some funding that was left from the available, available balance but from the cost of school uh, that, uh, uh, that contributed about a million dollars to the project. We are in the end, uh, with, the, with the blessing of the Department of Revenue, we are using exempt debt capacity from the prior debt exclusion vote that was originally for four schools, including this fact. The, the viewers agree that we have some funding capacity left there. We are uh, using in the plan, uh, in the, the funding plan for the school, uh, $6.7 million worth of exempt debt, which we will reduce by the amount that the town receives the sale of the former um, DAV building on Mass Ave. Um, the town's in the process of soliciting bids on that. We're hoping to get a million dollars so that the the impact on the taxpayers, uh, the exempt impact that will be added to the tax rate, will represent $5.7 million on the project. The rest of the project is being funded by uh, the, the federal funds from the Thompson and by what we were able to fit within the exempt, the non-exempt plan that's, that's in their hands, which represents seven, in total $7.4 million of, uh, of non-exempt. Okay, John. Hey, Brian. Um, if you, if the town gets less than a million, is there enough <clears throat> left over exempt debt to cover that shortfall? There is. There's, there's quite a bit actually. The DOR said we had several million dollars worth of capacity above this number, but at which which we could have used, but we we to <clears throat> to save the taxpayers as much as possible. We squeezed everything we could out of the, the non-exempt plan 
and, and only use what we have to uh, of exact value. Carol? And my question is why only a million for that property? Uh, the, the expected value of that property was originally set at three quarters of a million. More recent information has been that, that the town might be able to achieve a million dollars for it. Beyond that, I, I have no information that indicates it's worth more than one. That's the guidance we can give. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat>
we touched on many of these in the course of this presentation. And that includes uh, Arlington High School renovation program, uh, whatever is going to happen with uh, Miniman, uh, the uh, uh, renovation and renewal of the Department of Public Works building, which, uh, which is really in uh, serious, seriously sad condition. Uh, there are, there are uh, OSHA, OSHA issues around the building. The roof's not in good condition. Uh, some of the walls leak. Uh, they're just, it's a pr pretty complex uh, set of buildings. We spent most of the morning and part of an afternoon touring it about six months ago, and it really uh, requires attention. Uh, Barbara talking about this civic block planning, that's an important issue. And then we have our school enrollment growth. Um, what, what we plan to do with the Thompson and the Hardy, uh, the decisions that have to be made about the middle school, and, and we on the capital planning committee have to stay within this 5% limit. So that means that the town is going to have to consider uh, debt excludes. And also, um, you know, the, the, the sidewalk improvement program was, was discussed before. A lot of the sidewalks in town, not just the curb cuts, but the sidewalks, are really, <coughs> really in tough condition. And I think um, even the $500,000 a year is barely going to be a drop in the bucket to address, address those issues. So um, on page 37, there's a, it's, it's a repeat of the slide that Sandy took me through earlier. And I just want to again emphasize that all the items that are in the five-year capital plan and the fiscal year 2017 budget documents that are attached uh, to the uh, document set that you received tonight uh, conform to the Finance Committee's uh, uh, central, central guidance that the capital non-exempt capital spending be contained within 5% of the uh, net non-exempt uh, capital budget. And uh, I think we've, we've demonstrated to you how that works and, and, and what, what we've done to get us there. So we're, gonna, we're asking you to vote the items that are on page 38. I normally use this um, slide to um, sort of summarize where we are. And, um, we're looking to spend $11,150,000 in new borrowing under this uh, capital uh, budget. And we're looking to spend $2,469,625 in uh, cash. And we're recommending this expenditures of $3.33 million being funded by various other categories such that's off the tax base, such as the uh, uh, community development block grant funds and other state and federal funds and enterprise funds that don't directly uh, attach to the uh, tax rate. So we're talking about a total of 16.94 million, 625,000, dollars of new capital expenditures that we're recommending. And the vote that's gonna show up in the um, Finance Committee report and the Capital Planning Committee report at town meeting it's going to include not only the non-exempt, but it's also going to include <coughs> debts, voting the debt service on enterprise fund bar borrowings and on um, non-exempt debt that's been previously approved by a town meeting uh, for the citizens, in the citizens, but has to be uh, uh, voted anyway. And that's summarized for you on the right-hand side of the page. The, um, the, 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 the non-exempt portion is at the top. The exempt portion is listed down below, and then with, with several of the, the offsets that uh, Sandy referred to earlier, and then the, the total tax rate appropriation is for 11192533 In case you're wondering why that's less than $16 million, uh, on the other side of the page, remember that, um, that we only spend, in the, in the debt service, we only spend one year's worth of money at a time. So if there's a 20-year bond, in that bonding number, you're only spending 5% of it in a specific year. So the, so the number is going to be, uh, going to be small. So, um, what we would like to respectfully ask of the Finance Committee tonight is that you vote for the little action on the recommended budget that we've described to you that you also vote to support our five-year plan. Um, and remember that you can't, with the exception of borrowing, when you vote on a five-year plan, you're, you're only voting on the borrowing part. 
you can't find future town meetings for uh, cash expenditures or, or other activities. Uh, we also would ask that you transfer uh, $10,000 to the Perpetual Care uh, Cemetery Fund to the capital budget to support uh, some, some uh, efforts by the uh, uh, Department of Public Works on the cemetery and also support the Treasurer's Debt Rescission article that, which I think I misspelled it, <coughs> but um, this is the Treasurer's Debt Rescission article that uh, was just presented to you by uh, Michael Moore. Are there any questions? Ron? Yeah, Charlie, two questions. Um, what, what is in the other category? And my second question is, could you just kind of walk us through and reconcile on the previous page, the bottom line, non exempt plan of 6805, the right side of slide 38. Okay, let's take one question at a time. The first question was, what is the other category? Yes. Is that what you, so if you look on, the best thing to do is to look uh, on the exhibit that is the capital budget, and it's the, it's, it's the, uh, it says on the top, uh, 2000, fiscal year 2007 capital budget, and, um, hmm, okay, I'm not sure exactly how this turned out, but, um, the first section says board of selectmen, and it says bond, cash, and other. Okay? So the other that's the other category. In other words, this capital budget for fiscal year 2017 that, that we're voting consists of all the items that are in these three pages. But some of them are paid for by borrowing, some of them are paid for by direct cash appropriation, off the tax rate. And some of them are paid by cash from other than the tax rate. So for example, if you go down uh, on the first page where it says uh, Council on Aging Transportation Enterprise Fund, the enterprise fund that you reviewed, remember what enterprise funds are supposed to do. They're supposed to include a capital reserve to pay for their own capital assets. Okay. So uh, this says that this particular van is being paid for by funds in the enterprise fund, which in principle come from fees or insurance charges or something. Um, let's see, there's another one. Uh, the uh, well, the cemetery division. I just asked you about the ten thousand dollars. That's another. Um, that's coming from a trust fund, so it's not. You know, it's, it's in the uh, perpetual care fund, so it's not directly uh, taxes. Um, and the public works highway division. The. Uh, okay. Chapter 90 roadway funds under roads and path infrastructure is $750,000 this year that we anticipate coming in from the state to fund some of the roads. It's things like this that are not on the tax rate. Okay? Thank you. Now, what was the second question? Um, you can probably a slide one. On slide 37, the five year plan shows. A net non exempt plan amount of 685092. And that's working within the 5% limit. Yes. Um, how do we, what's the relationship between that number and and uh, what you're showing here on slide 38 on the right side of a total non-exempt appropriation. Of yes. Okay. There are certain uh, offsets here that are um, <coughs> that are what I'll call paper offsets, and the, the one that is easiest for me to explain is. Um, the adjustment for the Addison, because I'm so familiar with that, okay? Back in uh, about 1990, 
seven or something like that. The, the, when we were renovating the, the office, the project started out at $8 million, and there was an overrun that went to $14 million. And the state did not refund, did not provide any uh, reimbursement for the overrun. So the, the overrun cost, the debt expense, went into the capital budget and was paid off uh, by the capital budget, essentially reducing the capital budget. So this is a paper adjustment that has sort of flipped that to, to give the capital budget the money back from the general fund. It's not a cash transaction per se, but it's a, it's a paper transaction that says, okay, that money from the state went into the, went into the general fund. The capital budget's paying twice the debt service that it should be paying. And so we're going to offset that state <coughs> against the debt service. Which is what that four hundred and thirty-six thousand seven hundred seventeen is. The reason why you don't see it the next year is we're actually at the last year of of that adjustment. <coughs> so, so those types of adjustments. So it is the paying back. Yeah, we're getting paid. We're getting paid back for money that we spent that we didn't have to spend, but the state put us in the position of having to spend. <coughs> and similarly. The, uh, the, uh, the bond premiums that, that uh, were spoken about earlier, the town got, you know, when, when, the, when the when out in finance debt, they got an interest rate of uh, 4%, let's say. But really, it was a lot less than that because the, the, the bond uh, buyers gave the town a million dollars in cash as, a, as an incentive to go with them. So that money went into the general fund. But meanwhile, the, cap the capital plan is spending the full 4% when the actual effective interest rate is probably 2.8% or something like that. Okay? So the, the bond premium is another um, paper adjustment that, that reflects the, the true cost of that borrowing. Okay? So that's why those two numbers don't sync up exactly because in this, in this, in this block here, you're, you're only seeing the, uh, the absolute cash numbers that, that are uh, going to be in the vote at town meeting. Frank? Um, in your five-year plan, where you have the total town budget, are you including amounts from the override stabilization <coughs> fund of the town budget? Yes. And, and, uh, Gordon Jameson asks that question every year at town meeting. And it probably, probably represents a minor adjustment. Uh, I'm talking about the usage of it going forward, not, not, not when we're putting it in. I'm talking about, well, the look on the five year plan, I think it, it, we start using it in 2018, I guess. So it's three million and six million, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're referring to the long term financial plan? Yeah, the five, the five year plan. Of the town, correct. Okay, so we just take to, to keep things simple. We just take the total town budget, and if the, if there's money coming out of the uh, long-term stabilization fund being counted as revenue for the town, we, we count that. And if it's not there, we don't count. Okay, are there any other questions? So, how does the special town meeting in January? Where we uh, authorize the borrowing for the uh, Stratton. So how does that fit into the? Uh, is that part of the 11 million? One it's million? part of the new forecast debt service. If you look at, there should be a. I'm going to find it here. There's a new debt service chart. Um, one of the tables in the back. We have the. Uh, the 266, yeah, 516, new non-exempt debt service. Yeah, yeah, but we actually put the, the new debt forecast in here. The same. Yeah. So there's a there's a table. It's about three pages long, and it says five-year plan new debt service. Okay. Thank you. And if you go, this is on page two or three. It also says page 56. Um, we have a complicated number system. 
But at the very bottom, you see the Stratton building improvements. These, these are the numbers. These are the costs that were voted. This is at the bottom of, uh, it says page two of three. Uh, at the bottom it says schools. It starts out with bus number 101, number 102, et cetera. Yep. At the very bottom of that section, Stratton building improvements. And there's three, three slugs of money there. I don't know why they're in separate categories, but probably because we voted them differently at the special town meeting. But um, the, this is the debt service for the Stratton. So it's even though we're not, even though it's already been voted, it's in this okay. plan. Is is that part of the eleven million one hundred and fifty, or is that on top of the eleven million one hundred and fifty? Last page, you can see it. The 266-516 is a new non-exempt debt service, which matches the number on page 38. Yeah, that's from what number is that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this yes. number here. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. On page three of three of the debt service, it says 266-516 is a new non-exempt debt service in fiscal 2017. That's the same number that's in the, the vote table. Okay. Uh, well, the bonding that we voted, the money of the bond is not included in the <coughs> 11 million bond number. Right, because it's already been voted. Okay, Peter. Did I understand that the Minuteman uh, uh, School uh, debt cannot be exempt? Has to be non-exempt. What? If so, why is that? No. Um, it, the it, it, it is hoped if if it's if it's passed and the project goes forward, um, we all certainly hope that the citizens of the town will exempt that debt. But it requires a vote of the citizens. And the comment that I made was, if we don't get a debt exclusion vote passed on that expenditure, it's going to hit our non-exempt budget. See, all the other non-exempt, all the other debt that we're talking about, understand. we have the right yeah, to defer. In case, in case we, we fail to vote for it. Yeah, we can say, okay, well, we're not going to, we're not going to do the Odyssey or something like that, in principle, right? So then we don't have the obligation. But Minuteman, it's outside of our control. Any additional questions? Chairman tells me that the, uh, the debt number does include the Stratton debt. So we'll have to go back and adjust that. The 11 million to 150? Yeah, it, should, it shouldn't include it for the debt. Oh. Well, I think. Uh, so we had a, we have a little we have a program that's supposed to take care of that, but apparently it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll make that adjustment and get you the new numbers. Okay. I, I think we could approve it in, in concept and then come back and adjust it okay. next week. Okay. Is that the completion of your presentation? Yes, it is. Thank you very much for your patient attention.
Okay, now are there any other questions on the capital program? Okay, uh, I want to thank all of you for coming. You guys do a great job as, as usual. And uh, thank you for being here. You're, yeah. happy to, you're happy to hang around for a little while longer. We don't have any refreshments, but you can see about our discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what I'd like to do is there's three votes before us. Um, so let's get two of them done, the smaller ones. Uh, Article 37 is the decision of borrowing authorizations. That's on page 35 in the handout. Huh? Oh. Okay, so page 35 in the handout is, uh, is the rescission. I know somebody's going to ask a question on town meeting, so I'll, I might as well ask you. Um, you got 191,941 for the uh, Thompson. Why can't we just hold on to that and use it for a possible addition? Because the project has been completed and the money has to be borrowed. Okay. So it was the project was to build a new school. That's right. Not an addition. Okay. <coughs> Sounds good to me. Paul. Does the exempt debt that that is part of, that that's still within our uh, available exempt debt according to DOR. <coughs> so we could, if, if the town meeting voted to borrow more money for an addition, at least this part of it could already be covered by the we, debt exempt. I don't think the DOR, the, when we moved this to the DOR, the DOR said you can use the uh, the remaining money for the strap, okay? But that's it. Okay. And, and this refers to debt that is authorized but not issued. And so if it's, if it's authorized and it's, and it's issued, then we have the cash. Then you can reappropriate the cash. But you can't, you can't go out and sell a bond to somebody for something that doesn't exist. That's why you want to rescind this. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, so this is on page 35 of the capital handout, rescinding prior year debt. Uh, we would vote to rescind these unborrowed pieces because the project is finished and the money is not needed. Uh, so this is Article 37 in the uh, warrant. Are there any additional questions? Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to rescind these. Uh, pieces. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, unanimous vote. What's the date today? 21st? 21st. That's right, I could tell by the snowfall that it was the second day of spring. Okay, Gloria? Yes. You're back there? Okay. Uh, there was a rescission article in last year's town meeting. So why don't you just pull that framework out and fit in these pieces? I will. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. The second vote, if I can get that to what I want, is on Article 54 of the, uh, maybe I'm Article 54 of the warrant is the transfer of funds for cemetery. Uh, so the perpetu the uh, capital budget committee has requested ten thousand dollars to the capital budget for head headstone cleaning and repairs. Yes. Okay. And uh, the uh, 
Department of Public Works that we approved uh, a couple weeks ago is requesting $150,000 to the Cemetery Commission uh, for capital work that they, or for work that they need to do. That's pretty, I think we've been doing 150 for quite a while. Uh, so moved. Okay, uh, moved and seconded. Again, the protection, uh, this is, we can take it from perpetual care uh, and lots of graves. I don't think either of you really care which one it comes from. Uh, the maintenance uh, has to come from perpetual care. Okay, so. $10,000. Okay. It has not, it's not what we care about, but the trust fund is Okay. Okay, so I need uh, $10,000 from perpetual care and probably 150 from perpetual care too. There's two different funds um, there. Uh, are there any questions on that? Can I take anything from lots and graves? Well, I gotta figure out how much is in lots and graves. Our uh, roof was very because last year we took the cemetery from perpetual care and the 10,000 from lots and graves. I don't know why we did it that way. Uh, I'm sure that's what we did last year. Okay, so last year we took 150 from perpetual care and 10,000 from sale of lots and graves. We have 5.9 million in perpetual care and 393,000 in lots and graves. So we can take either from. Okay, why don't we take. The ten thousand from perpetual care and the hundred and fifty from lots and grace. How much did you say was in lots and grace? Three ninety three. Okay, plenty of money. Ruth always just wanted to make sure we didn't take it all out of one and there's no money there. So ten thousand will come from perpetual care, a hundred and fifty thousand will come from the sale of lots and grace. Or if I find out that it's actually the reversal. I figure you guys don't really particularly care uh, as long as the controller is happy. Um, so that's what it would be. 10000 to capital budget, 150000 to DPW Cemetery Division. Are there any questions? Okay, do I have a motion? Second. Second? Okay. Motion's been made and seconded for those two items. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 321-16. Okay, now back to the main uh, recommended vote of the uh, Capital Budget Committee. So you need to modify the 11150000 uh, Yes, it's going to be reduced by at least uh, 6320000 which is uh, the two items that were voted uh, at a special town meeting. And, and there may be another number I have to check on. Okay, and so that would modify the total tax rate appropriation? Actually, it probably shouldn't be. That's just a borrowing. It, it, won't, it, won't, it won't affect the tax rate appropriation. Okay, so the tax rate appropriation we're looking at is 11192533. Okay, so. Uh, he'll just, uh, Charlie will uh, correct that bond up top, the 11150 <coughs> That is borrowing. That doesn't really affect the uh, tax rate appropriation down the bottom of that. Uh, okay, does anybody have any questions uh, on this, on the capital budget? It's 6000 less than the long range plan. Thank you. Pardon? It's $6,000 less than the long range plan. Uh, so thank you. It's 0.01%. You can have a party. Okay. Uh, any other questions? John? Same question I asked last year. What exactly, which numbers exactly are we voting on? We're voting on the bottom line, 11192533. Uh, um, that's the amount that's going to impact um, the tax rate. Uh, and the borrowing will be modified by the special town meeting 
but the borrowing doesn't impact the tax rate. And um, so, so that would be the motion we're, we're borrowing, we're voting on. And we're not going to vote separately on the borrowing. Uh, no, but uh, Charlie, do you think if you could correct this and just have a sheet, one page sheet back for us uh, on Monday? I will. Okay. Uh, do you want to hold off the bar with a vote until then, or what do people feel comfortable with? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So again, we're just voting that bottom line total tax rate appropriation. Any further discussion? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, so that is voted. And Charlie, what? Article 36 in the warrant. That's right, Article 36 in the warrant. Once again, Charlie, thank you and the committee for the tremendous work you do. Uh, you know, we, we don't start until January, they, they start in September. Uh, so it goes for quite a bit. Okay, it is 11, oh, 921. So we've tried to do some other work. Okay, uh, take go to your uh, warrant. Are they a uh, CPA? Gloria, are the CPA people presenting tonight? Tonight? No, they told me that Larissa told me that uh, they weren't ready or Tell us. Okay, let's just start with the warrant on uh, Article. Okay, the first article is uh, Article 34 that's already been voted. Uh, Carolyn, are you able to get the, that vote to uh, Gloria in well, the next couple of days? Okay, if you, if you could uh, email that to her so she could just plug in the word document, that would really be good. Okay, Article 35, the budgets we're doing. We just voted Article 36. Uh, we voted Article 37. Oops. Uh, 38 we voted. 39 we voted. Uh, okay, Article 40. Now this was the 10 register voter article to, uh, for basically the, the school capacity and, and expansion. Um, the enrollment task force is, has a, uh, done a, or is in the process of having a report done comparing the Gibbs to the Audison as far as cost that will go back to the enrollment uh, task force by the end of April. So we're not gonna have it. Uh, you know, it's something we're, I'm going to have to figure out how to get some, uh, some time uh, for, to review it thoroughly. Uh, there's an identical, virtually identical uh, Warren article in the special town meeting. So my recommendation to you is that we vote no action on Article 40 uh, so we can get this report done and then vote, uh, and, and then vote, uh, we'll report at town meeting on the special town meeting when we get to that. Um, so, uh, you know, we could have that. But we should report at the special town meeting because uh, that can actually be delayed. The special town meeting might come up on article on April 27th on the schedule. We'll vote some of those articles where we have it and then we might have to, might have to postpone that until, you know, sometime in early to mid-May uh, to get the rest of them because we've got, uh, uh, We've got the Minuteman, uh, we've got the Enrollment Task Force articles, uh, we've got a couple of others there. So uh, my recommendation on Article 40 here is a no action vote with the explanation that we're going to take action in the special town meeting. So uh, I have just one question. Um, if, we, if we do as you say and postpone the special town meeting until we get additional information, that means the special town meeting is actually going to close later in the spring. 
And is there, is there any other article in the special town meeting that's time sensitive that would normally be um, that we that we want to, uh, to close the meeting on an earlier date? The only okay. Uh, Okay, Article 1 is amendments to budgets. That's not a problem. Transfer to the Special Stabilization Fund, I don't think is a problem then for the uh, special ed. Uh, capital budget school expansion. Uh, so that's this one. Yeah. Capital budget for the Stratton School, that's going to be no action on that. The feasibility study for the high school, we just have to come up with a number. And then the last article is on uh, Minuteman School construction. Now, if we need to vote on, if we want to vote no on that, we have to do that by May 15th. So that means uh, we have to finish that by May 15th too. So it would be better to leave the article in the, in the regular town meeting um, so that we don't get jammed up on that issue. Okay, that's a good point. Why don't I, why don't we vote uh, no. on Article 40 that will report a town meeting. Yeah. Okay. And we could probably, we'll do that the same on the special, and then we'll, therefore we'll take action on whichever, it's a good point, thank you. Uh, we'll, re we'll use whatever article is the most convenient to get the job done. So, uh, is that a motion? So moved. Okay, second. Okay, so the motion and second is basically we'll report a town meeting under Article 40 and we'll do the same thing in the special. Is there any questions on this? Okay, all in favor of we'll report a town meeting as a vote, we say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. 3-21-16. Okay, Article 40 is done. Uh, 41 is done, 42 is done. Okay, 43, that'll be Wednesday. Was everybody, was other, did anybody else that besides me have a problem opening one of the, uh, uh, Steve sent around two handouts. One was the standard budget one, and the other was on the building project, and I couldn't open it. needed PowerPoint. I'm sorry? You needed PowerPoint to open it. Yeah. They then sent around a PDF yeah. subsequently. So okay, I gotta look for that. that. My computer popped up and said dangerous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Article 44 is all the committees and commissions. Now the G, which is the Arlington Tourism, we're gonna hear that again uh, on Monday. Have we voted any of the others? Yes. yes. Have we voted all of the others? I think so. Okay, the Historic Commission, all those down the line. Okay. Uh, Peter, could you just double check to make sure we voted all of the rest? Yes. Uh, and then we'll do that. Okay. Uh, town celebrate uh, celebrations. Now we've got three here. One is the Veterans Day Parade. Um, I have an amount here, but I have a feeling it's last year's. Did we get a new number for in the budget for the uh, Veterans Day Parades? This is Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Patriots Day. I think it's in the budget. In the back? Okay, the request is 5,667 for Veterans Day. Town Day celebrations, we always vote zero. 
Display of flags on Mass Ave, we've already voted zero. And placing of American flags on Brave. Let me just see if there's a different it's page. Page 226. Okay, flags on graves, 4,500. Okay, so under Article 45, Appropriation Town Celebrations, Veterans Day Parade is recommended at 5,667, which is what we voted all along. Town Day Celebrations, we vote zero, and that's only because if we need to, we have something to transfer money out of the reserve fund to. Uh, I can never remember actually having to vote money from the reserve fund because uh, they, they've been very good at raising money. But, so we have that zero. Display of American flags on Mass Ave is the same. We've always voted zero. And placing of American flags on the graves, that's really a mandate, uh, 4,500. So are there any questions on those? Yeah. One thing, you said the Lord's Day off the day uh, and Patriot's Day. Right, it's Veterans Day parades, Memorial Day observation, <coughs> and Patriot's Day celebration. Okay. So it's all three. All right. And then the rest of the money is raised privately. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded for, make sure I got this right, $10,167. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action, unanimous. 321.16. Okay, Article 46. Uh, sorry, I should have looked at this beforehand. The indemnity for Oh, here it is. Okay, indemnity for uh, police officers. Actually, I think it's police officers and firefighters. The recommendation is eighty-five hundred dollars. And then the legal defense fund. We've always voted zero, so again, we have a place to transfer money in, in case we need to. Uh, for for those people new, the indemnification of of uh, police officers and firefighters. Uh, basically, the requirement is that they go to all their other insurances that they might have, Medicare or whatever, and then if none of those will cover them, then the town is obligated to cover. Uh, so there's a lot of requirements, but it's usually been like the 15 actual was $8,014. And then obviously if any money's left over, it goes back to the, to the general fund. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, the recommendation is $8,500. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay, again, any questions, discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the $8,500 under Article 47, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, 21. Yeah, Article 46. 16. Okay, water bodies, we've done. Forty, forty-seven, forty-eight. Harry Barber, we've done. Uh, I think we voted twenty-nine or forty-nine. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the OPEP, want to do that? Either uh, you can do it. Carolyn, do you have those numbers? I thought, I thought we did it like the second week, the second time we met. We didn't? No. Okay, hold on. Let me grab the numbers. Okay. Oh, okay. Which are um, so it's 50. Okay, but well we need a breakdown on the uh, 413,000 from uh, the, uh, 
Non contrib. Non contrib. And 155000 from the agreement on retirement. Okay, 413 even? Yes. 413 even and 155000 Okay. So, uh, and appropriation from the balance of the health benefit trust, I think that would spend 300000 uh, we haven't met with. Oh, we haven't done insurance yet. We haven't met with. We're doing. We're doing that Wednesday morning, and that's to present it. Wednesday. Okay, that's the amount that we've been taking from the healthcare trust fund. Yeah. Yeah. Last year we had a total of nine hundred sixty-one thousand, but we haven't met with uh, Karen. Okay, uh, and then the last fund. I don't, the last one was a one-shot deal that the manager had. Uh, yeah, that was just an extra money. Okay, so we won't be doing D. Right. Okay, so you want to hold that off until? So on Wednesday night. Okay, but those are the three numbers. It's the money we put in the other post-employment uh, trust funds. Okay, appropriation for the long-term stabilization fund. That has usually been 100,000. Done. You have that as done? Two, five. Okay, two, five. Yeah. Uh, overlay reserve. I don't think we have a number yet. From the from the assessors. Um, strange. No, we don't have a number. There's six hundred thousand a year. How much is it there? Six hundred. Okay. Oh, that that's for the money we need to uh, have to spend. This would be the money. Oh wait a minute. Okay. Are you uh, appropriation for? It's the appropriation. Yeah. Because we don't appropriate overlay. This is from the overlay surplus account to be used as revenue. Okay. So this is the money that's given back. So it would be under uh, a, under revenue up top. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. I don't think the assessors have come out with a number yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who is the assessor's budget? Okay. Um, they, had, they hadn't voted at the time we were there. Okay. I just want one person to say they'll go back and check with them. Brian? Okay. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Brian will check. Don't you want that delegation to Florida? Okay. Um, transfer of funds from the special education. We've got to wait for the schools on that. Uh, we just voted 54. 